thought I'd do a video on restringing a slotted headstock guitar. This is inspired, if you will, by Martin Guitar's video, Dave Doll's Pro Tips. And it's a very good video, I will put a link below. But what frustrated me about that video was the cutaway at the end. You never get to see the result, you never get to see how the strings are wound around the tuning pegs. Somebody's walking past. I recently restrung my James Nelligan guitar, so I photographed the process in real close-up photos and I've put this video together and hopefully you'll get a better idea of how the whole process works. This is my James Nelligan Lismore Series Parlour guitar. I, I love the way it looks, it's gorgeous and it, it sounds really nice too. It also has a very nice Fishman pickup system. This is how they strung the guitar originally and I hope you can see that they've looped the string back through the tuning post to lock the string solidly. Now this may offer a good bit of tuning stability but it makes changing strings very tricky and it's no good if you want to quickly change a string during a gig. I finally got the strings off, drawing blood in the process, and I've set the tuning posts at the 45 degree angle suggested by Martin in their video. I'm using a Daddario string winder and it has a useful tool for pulling end pegs. Misty loves playing with guitar strings, but seeing as I've just drawn my blood, I think we better keep them away from her. We don't want a blind cat. I'm using Elixir lights, but I really should have used a heavier gauge string as the scale length of the guitar is a little shorter than usual. I'm lining the ball ends up as recommended by Martin. One of the advantages of putting all the strings on in one go is you can reach inside the guitar and make sure that the ball end is sitting firmly against the bridge plate. I've had strings pop out in the past because they've been sitting on the end of the bridge pin and not held against the bridge plate. I thread the top string through the hole in the tuning post and loop it back round to the inside of the head. The string is going to be wound to the inside so we want the turns of string to hold the string against the post. Pull everything tight and cut off the string. The string's going to be rotating several times around the tuning post, so this prevents it scratching me and the headstock. Don't use electrical wire cutters for cutting steel strings, as you'll ruin the blades. Use cutters designed for steel, such as the ones on the end of the Daddario tool. I'm using a little bit more slack than advised by Dave Dull in the Martin video. I personally prefer an extra turn of string on the tuning post. I now do the bottom string, but with everything mirrored, again winding the string to the inside of the headstock. Note that the last winding doesn't go over the end of the string. For tuning stability, you need the string sitting snugly against the post, not sitting on a string end that could shift about. The remaining strings are done the same, but I've wound all the strings to the inside of the headstock rather than the outside as advised by Martin, as the holes in the posts are off-centre on this guitar. I probably should have bent the end of the fifth string up to avoid the final turn going over the string end, like I did with the sixth string. Once it was tuned to pitch though, the end had half a turn against the post, so it was okay. For the third string, I made sure the final turn went under the end, not over it. I think I should have had an extra winding on the fourth string, but it is secure. I don't like to see bridge pins uneven like this, but they are all secure. It's probably more to do with the softness of the plastic than the routing of the holes. So maybe a set of ebony bridge pins might help.
I hope that helps. Misty certainly seems to approve of the results. If you have any questions then please leave a comment and as always click like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.